Okay, guys. So <clears throat> let's start with the, you know, with the point I, where I stopped. So Navier's thought that relativistic hydrodynamics is just um, nothing else but Eckhart or Landau Lipschitz uh, description, and in this case, the energy momentum tensor uh, consists of the equilibrium part or local equilibrium part. EQ, which has the form of the perfect fluid. And in addition, we have uh, two terms. Uh, small pi mu nu is the uh, shear stress tensor, and uh, pi is the bulk pressure. So the bulk pressure is multiplied by the projector, the tensor delta mu nu, and the bulk pressure gives the isotropic correction to the equilibrium pressure, which appears in the perfect fluid part. And the shear tensor um, describes anisotropies of the, of the pressure tensor. So now, using the arguments um, about the entropy increase, if we require that the entropy increase, then we relate shear stress tensor with the gradients of the flow. So we relate pi mu with the tensor sigma mu nu and the Connection is via the shear viscosity coefficients eta, which would be positive to have entropy production positive. And also, the bulk viscosity is related with the gradient of the flow, uh, exactly with the expansion tensor theta, which is d mu u. This appears here. And the connection is linear through the bulk viscosity coefficient zeta here. So in this case, we have four equations for four unknowns because at uh, this level, we have again uh, four independent basic hydrodynamic variables. So it means temperature and three independent components of the four velocity of the fluid element. So three independent components of the flow vector. So we have the same number of equations and unknowns, but you know this scheme doesn't work in practice. Uh, physical reason is that uh, somehow reactions of the system is directly connected with the gradients. So it, it looks as if we had really instantaneous behavior uh, in, in the system, instantaneous kind of uh, reaction of the system. More formally, it has been proven by in several papers in the 1970s. Well, so what the way out, or we may try to add more uh, gradients, but it doesn't help. I will come to this um, point in more detail. But um, uh, the solution was given actually by Israel Stewart. So I was uh, giving you arguments uh, of Israel and Stewart, but uh, they did uh, much more. I simply, he found kind of solution to, to this problem. So. Again, one slide uh, with the recollection. So this is the entropy current, S mu, S mu, and it has uh, you know, some part which actually is expressed by the equilibrium uh, quantities like the pressure and beta. We remember that beta is the ratio of the flow for vector u mu and the temperature. And then there is minus Psi, Psi is the ratio of chemical potential and, and, and temperature. And N mu is the, the current conserved, the conserved current, like the background the current. Beta is again, you know, equilibrium, local equilibrium quantity. And T might be of equilibrium. So three first trends were discussed by us. I mentioned that if we are doing wrong somehow, there is a chance to add, to make some correction and do some extra trends. This is what really Israel and Stuart did. But um, I want to maybe still emphasize that the ratio of, or some difference of, of the product of the pressure and beta can be obtained from local equilibrium identities like here. And the entropy production rules like here, so for instance, Q should be proportional to the gradient of mu over T. The shear stress tensor should be proportional to, to this gradient, which is actually shear flow tensor, sigma, and so on. 
maybe one remark about the notation, which is quite popular here. So if the two indices are in between uh, these uh, angle brackets, it means that this tensor or rank two tensor would be uh, made symmetric, orthogonal to the flow and traceless. So in this case, there are only five independent components left of this term. Well, so now uh, we come to really one of the most important developments in relativistic hydrodynamics made uh, probably so far. So the idea of dry steward was that, okay, we have to keep more terms in the expression of entropy, more terms, and uh, they really wrote uh, six additional terms. You know, there is, uh, you know, this there is, of course, Navier Stokes part in the entropy, and this we discussed in more detail. But, you know, they argue that there might be some other terms, like, you know, there might be some term which is proportional to u mu. And then if we go to the second order kind of terms in deviations from equilibrium, we can multiply u mu by the product of the bulk pressure, by the product of the heat. Uh, flow for vector, so q nu, q nu. We can also multiply it by um, the contraction of the shear stress tensor. Yeah, so, so this would be correction which is quadratic, actually, in, in dissipative quantities. Each of those terms enters with the new kinetic coefficient. So far, we produced the um, conduction coefficient, lambda, and the two viscosity coefficients, eta and and zeta. But now, if we introduce more terms, there are really new kinetic coefficients, new functions which appear here, and they should be given some really physical interpretation if we see how uh, this formalism is really developed, and uh, if we see the final equations we, we get with, with this term. So, okay, so Besides the term which is proportional to u mu, we can have the term which is proportional to the heat flow vector q mu, and it might be multiplied by uh, by pi. And there might be also the term which is a product of the shear stress tensor pi and the heat flow vector. And then again, there are some new kinetic coefficients. Uh, what is a convention is kind of um, extracting you know, temperature in the denominator. Now, if you look at the original paper by Zeiss, two are, the signs are different because I changed the, the metric. You know, Israel was actually famous for doing GR, general relativity. So his paper, he has always uh, called metric. So minus plus plus plus. So one has to be careful when we really read the papers uh, about, um, uh, as usual, you know, whenever you come into to some details, one has to worry about the signs and, and factors of two. And now what it's kind of crucial is that, okay, so we can repeat the same story as with the Navier-Stokes uh, expression. So we can calculate the divergence of the entropy current, just using this expression, nothing else. So then we get really many, many terms um, and uh, maybe, and they, can be classified as the terms which multiply bulk viscosity, uh, and there is a group of terms that multiply uh, the heat flow vector, and, and also there are some terms that multiply pi mu. mu. Actually, this decomposition is not unique. I will tell you in a moment about this. But first, I would like to maybe um, see what happens if we take the terms which contain bulk viscosity. And, OK, bulk pressure, pi. So if we calculate the divergence of the entropy, then we will have, for instance, the term which goes like pi and the derivative of pi, like pi d mu pi, and this derivative of pi is multiplied by u mu. So there is the term that gives us a convective derivative of, of the bulk pressure. So this term appears here as d pi. So in my notation is u lambda d lambda pi. So it's the, you know, the rest frame, is the local fluid rest frame is the time derivative of the of the bulk uh, pressure. And there is some other terms, you know, 
the grouping of all those terms is such that, uh, that the first terms in the square brackets are those which are obtained in pure Navier Stokes theory. You know? So, of course, you can easily identify the new terms because they always involve beta coefficient of alpha coefficient, which are here. So, um, you know, first terms um, in the square brackets are old, like minus pi uh, theta minus q mu, and then the, the product of, of the temperature and for acceleration here, and also pi mu nu times sigma mu nu, these are old terms. But there are also new terms. And now I would say the crucial thing is that in all those terms, we produce sort of time derivatives of uh, dissipative terms, yeah, because we have convective derivative of the bulk uh, pressure here. We have also convective derivative of the heat flow uh, vector here. We have also the convective derivative of the of the shear stress tensor here. But of course, one has to be careful that because pi mu is already orthogonal and symmetric, then this derivative, you know, which appears here, is it also only I would say part of the derivative because that pi is already kind of projected, and this projection can be also treated as acting on on these terms. So we shall have the the, the traceless symmetric and uh, orthogonal part of this gradient. But this is kind of technical detail. The easier thing to see what happens is really we study uh, the bulk uh, pressure pi, capital pi. So now what we can do, we can try to rearrange those terms. Uh, and now, uh, OK, so the idea is to put uh, all those terms which have time derivative on the left-hand side, and then to keep uh, that you know, quantities uh, without any uh, factors again on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we put uh, old terms. Um, I mean, those which were obtained in the Navier Stokes the theory. So this one, uh, this and that. And there, there are some extra new terms. Actually, I put alpha zero, so I neglected these two terms. Uh, you know what, in general, Generally, one has to keep everything, you know, what what is possible. But uh, just to make some arguments, it's it's better maybe to get rid of some terms, not to have everything very much complicated. So now uh, we have uh, three equations which have similar structure. And what one does is one makes kind of uh, redefinition of, of the coefficients which appear here. So for instance, the first equation should be uh, divided by the product of zeta and theta zero. So zeta, we know this is the bulk viscosity. Theta zero is the new coefficient, which appeared as a possible new term in the entropy current. Uh, and now, uh, if we if we say that you know zeta times theta zero is kind of coefficient, which is the dimension of time. Uh, then we can divide uh, you no know, the first line by this product and get the formula which is you know, in this this box yeah? so we will have um convective derivative of the bulk pressure plus pressure divided by the tau pi coefficients which we call the relaxation time now we have minus zeta theta divided by zeta beta zero so there is one over beta zero term, which we call beta pi, capital pi. So this you no know, kind of new coefficients, but the product of those, uh, I guess, uh, of tau pi and beta pi gives zeta. Yeah. And there is still some extra term, which looks maybe ugly and not very much transparent. But, uh, but you know, this has, huge impact on the theory and on understanding of, of dissipation because now pi bulk pressure heat flow vector and also the shear stress vector, shear stress tensor they become independent quantities you know because they this equation contain time derivative you know before uh, pi was kind of 
you know, connected uh, uh, directly to 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 zeta. You know, also pi was connected directly to sigma. Now, uh, if we admit, okay, if we allow for some extra terms in entropy current, which are, I would say, acceptable, uh, then uh, we have, you know, this relation between, they become really, you know, independent quantity. So the structure completely changed of the equations because all dissipated quantities are sort of upgraded to new hydrodynamic variables. You know, maybe uh, I should repeat still one thing because it was not so so obvious. But um, uh, so I am not. Uh, I'm not now going back one slide. It's again the argument that the production of entropy should be positive. You know, so pi should be proportional to everything which is in the square bracket. So this is the, how we get uh, our uh, new equations, new hydrodynamic equations. And also Q mu should be proportional to everything which is in, in the square bracket here with a minus sign. And pi mu nu should be proportional to everything which is here. So not only to sigma, but other terms. So this is, uh, this is again, uh, this argument uh, repeated that entropy sh production should be positive. But now we have more and more terms. And um, this leads to completely new theory. From the mathematical point of view also, the character of equation is completely changed. And um, this allows us to have a causal description. So to summarize, I must say that you no know, dissipative quantities are somehow upgraded. They are somehow put to, to a kind of uh, new level. So they should be treated in the same way as, as the temperature and, uh, and flow. So, for instance, you can start solving equations uh, with some initial values for, for the bulk pressure, some non-equilibrium value, and also with some uh, equations with a given condition for on some boundary surface for Q mu and phi mu. So the character is completely changed. And now all you know. 10 components of the menu, you know, evolve according to this equation. So these are additional, uh, actually, dynamic equations. Not only conservation law, the laws include time derivatives, but uh, uh, but there are time derivatives in expression for the bulk pressure. So yeah. Now a simple case uh, which can be discussed, and I will need it also for further discussion, is the conformal case. Yes. Yeah, so the conformal case. You know, it means that, you know, bulk pressure should be zero. Uh, if we neglect also baryon current, uh, then the situation is quite simple because everything should scale with the temperature. All these kinetic efficiencies which are here, uh, also thermodynamic functions should scale with the temperature. So, so the situation is quite uh, really uh, simple in this case. And for instance, uh, okay, so, Energy density should go like p to the fourth. Also, pressure should go like p to the fourth. But energy momentum should be traceless, so the pressure is one third of the energy density. Also, the, the hydrodynamic equation is quite simple because energy density is a function of temperature only. Pressure is one third of energy density. So actually, um, you know, the equation discussed um, yesterday, the equation which this Entropy conservation actually describes how the temperature changes in time. This change is given by the expansion scalar. So this can be put everything to to the hydrodynamic equations, which uh, then become quite quite simple and uh, maybe easier to understand in, in terms of what's going on inside. The parameter beta, which is the kinetic new coefficient, also should scale uh, with the temperature as t to the fourth. So everything, come, everything comes from the kind of dimensional analysis for the conformal case. And because we have logarithmic derivatives, um, then many of the coefficients really um, disappear. So it's 
the coefficient that really determines how beta scales with temperature. I think the constant is not important. What remains, there are some, I would say, universal constants which have something to do with the dimension of the space time and so on. So, for instance, for the conformal system, uh, and the system where the baryon number uh, density is zero, we are left only with the equations which describe uh, the shear uh, stress tensor. And it has this form, you know? So there is the derivative, convective derivative of the of the pi. Uh, the angle brackets mean that we have to take the, the part which is symmetric, orthogonal, and traceless. Then there is the which is, you know, the, the pi divided by the relaxation time. On the right-hand side, we have the old piece related to the, to the shear viscosity. And there is this new term, which, uh, which comes from, uh, from beta coefficients here. Yeah? So this will give, you know, the new term. And now, OK, so, so if we neglect the you know, the time derivative here, and we neglect this guy, four over th three pi mu nu theta, then we have only, you know, the, the terms in the middle, and this is the Navier Stokes theory. Pi mu nu over tau pi is equal to beta pi sigma mu nu, and tau pi times, times beta pi is two times eta, the shear viscosity. So this is the Navier Stokes side. But now, making, you know, Entropy argument saying that okay, entropy current should have more terms than in the Navier's, uh, Navier Stokes theory. We got this term, this term in this simple case, which is conformal. Yeah, so you see that this looks like quadratic term, yeah, because in the Navier Stokes theory, pi goes like gradient, you no? Know? So we expect that pi is sort of first order quantity, but here we have the derivative of pi, so this is the second order uh, term in gradient. Uh, and this guy is also second order because pi should be again treated as first order quantity and theta contains gradient. So Israel Stewart theory is very often called um, the second order hydro or second order hydrodynamics because there are terms which are kind of quadratic in gradients. So this is also the answer to one of the questions yesterday that uh, somebody of you mentioned that if we add quadratic terms, uh, the situation can, can be uh, somehow cured. So this is really uh, the case. So, of course, it should be somehow checked by uh, by making, um, but you know, calculations and checking the stability and causality of the Israel Stewart theory. I must admit that you know the causality and uh, is not checking full you know non linear regime. Of Navier Stokes, but in many cases, uh, which are usually studied in this phenomenology of Fabian collisions, we can kind of see that it, it cures all the problems. So, this theory was, you know, it was formulated in 1970s in the context of gravitation, actually, and, uh, and general theory of relativity. And then I would say it was very rarely used, you know, because people are interested in the kinetic coefficients. If you want to determine kinetic coefficients, you are happy with Navier Stokes. Um, you know, people like bulk viscosity in cosmology because this gives a isotropic corrections to the pressure. So in many cosmological moments, I think this bulk viscosity appeared, but um, not shear viscosity. So. You know, I am just uh, aiming at, at giving you some time scale. You know, Navier's relativistic Navier talks was formulated by Eckhart in 1940. Then in uh, 1979, we we got this theory. <laughs> so it's quite a long time. You know, so you see how this is the blocks more or less. And then, you know, this theory was put really on, on computer and started to be solved only with heavy ion physics at rig. Um, and not from the beginning. No? Of course, there, there was also some attempts at lower energies, maybe for for description of uh, processes at CERN in 1980s, but usually uh, these were not very mature, mature you know, attempts. So actually, in the, only in the beginning of our millennium, I would say, this theory 
formulated in 1970 started to really use. So it's somehow sad or, or maybe it's natural that such theories are really developed um, in this way. So this is the second order and uh, in gradients. And now this kind of summary I want to make. So now I just keep what, what is the most important in Israel steward, you know? So I only keep the terms which contain convective derivative, now it's denoted by the dot, like the time derivative. So there are a few points I want to, to make. So, you know, so, and repeat, because I think it's very important that in Israel steward hydrodynamics, which is now a kind of the basic uh, hydrodynamic relativistic uh, approach, the bulk viscosity, uh, okay, the bulk pressures, and the shear stress tensor are promoted to dynamic variables. So they are, you know, they are, uh, they are simply treated as temperature and flow. So there are additional equations in addition to the conservation laws, there are additional equations which determine dynamics of, of these quantities, you know. So this is one, one, uh, one point. Now, you know, I was mentioning something about you know, this hydrodynamic and non-hydrodynamic mode. So now I can say more what, what it means uh, because, you know, if quantities are related with gradients, usually these equations are really describing hydrodynamic modes. Because if we have equations of this type, the new modes appear in the system. So let's think about a you know, system of some particles which is uniform in space. You know, so we have container, we have some particles and there is no gradient of the density, temperature everywhere. So energy density is everywhere the same, but the system is not uh, uh, isotropic in the momentum. So this, this means that the prime mu is different from zero. So in this case, the right -hand side of this equation will be zero, but pi will evolve, you know? So uh, in this case, actually, you know, if you neglect the right-hand sides, we see that pi, you know, capital pi, small pi, they fulfill very simple equations with constant relaxation time. And this equation simply describe exponential decay of these quantities to zero with the scale which is defined by the relaxation time, tau pi, uh, capital pi, tau pi. So, so the, this formalism, you know, introduces the formalism of Israel Stewart introduces non-hydrodynamic modes into the description. And now it's kind of, uh, in some sense, uh, fun and, yeah, because as a people who, who do, you know, hydro and are motivated by more practical applications. For instance, they, they want to determine kinetic coefficients and use hydro to describe heavy ion collisions, to describe the data and to extract the values of the of the coefficients from the data. So they, of course, they think, okay, we do hydro. We told hydro on the computer, you know. Um, our model are really hydrodynamic models, but those who are, you know, uh, more theoretically biased, they will tell you, okay, your hydrodynamic equations actually are only partly hydrodynamic because your equations describe non-hydrodynamic modes and hydrodynamic modes. And only this hydrodynamic mode is really real hydrodynamic behavior. And you can call, you know, this long time behavior, the, the real hydrodynamic behavior, the genuine hydrodynamic behavior. Other things are really non-hydrodynamic and, um, and actually they, uh, somehow help to to stabilize the system and really the system can be really uh, you know solved so another interpretation is that which is the third point that if one introduces non hydrodynamic modes so then uh, those non hydrodynamic modes are treated as the regulators of the theory I will also come back to this point because this is kind of a very modern point of view or just a modern attitude to hydrodynamics that 
we start with really the kind of uh, uh, Israel, okay, another stocks uh, theory. We connect dissipation with gradients. This doesn't work. So we have to kind of regularize the theory. Okay. Regularization in this context means, okay, we have to make it uh, causal and stable. So we have to improve it. Um, usually, in practice, this means that we have to add some terms which introduce a non hydrodynamic uh, mode. So, non hydrodynamic terms are treated as regulators of the theory. So, now hydrodynamics is treated more and more as a kind of effective field theory treated in the gradient expansion. And there are some terms added to play the role of the, the regulators. Uh, so, this is kind of really new point of view and uh, it's important to to know also terminology and point of view of, of different people who do actually similar analysis. The fourth point here is that non-hydrodynamic modes generate entropy of linear. Yeah. So uh, of course for us now it's clear because we saw that the, the pattern in the entropy current and uh, we calculated the entropy divergence and we saw that the, the contribution to the divergence of the entropy from the terms. We can also see from this equation that entropy is produced because for instance if we have the system which is, is isotropic in space but not isotropic in the in the momentum then the dissipation will be you know decreasing but then entropy is of course produced in the system because uh, it, we go to the state with more uh, more entropy. So I think this is kind of crucial, uh, I would say, piece of information and uh, everything is somehow in those simple equations, which is important about Israel Stewart. So we have to remember that dissipative, dissipative terms were upgraded to new dynamic uh, variables and uh, they fulfill new equations of the of the the mathematical structure is changed uh, you can keep the system causal and uh, um, and stable and uh, and okay and one example so of course uh, so we can also study you know okay we can study this problem of uh, uh, causality and dissipation is such a way that we start with the system which is really in the global equilibrium and then we make some perturbation. Uh, for the energy momentum tensor, we can have many uh, perturbations uh, which are characterized by you know, the, the wave um, uh, vector k, which can be, you know, oriented in different directions. And also the deviations of the of changes of the flow uh, for vector uh, can be different, they can be plotted in different directions, and the changes of the energy momentum tensor, you know, perturbation can be studied in different directions. So actually you have different uh, different channels uh, for perturbations. There is a sound channel where we have non-vanishing delta ux and delta txx, but the wave vector going, okay, pointing along the x-axis, but there are other channels, like the shear channel, where we have non vanishing uh, UY corrections component of the flow, and there is a tensor channel. But the most interesting is sound uh, channel, probably is also the, the, the simplest case. So if you make the uh, perturbation, that, you know, the perturbation somehow Okay, I lost you, but is it okay now? Okay, so so you can make you know the analysis of of small oscillations around equilibrium in the sound channel, and then one finds the connection between the frequency omega and the and the wave vector k. So actually, actually the cubic equation, but if you Look for small k. One, one, one can solve it, in, and you find uh, three roots. Oh, is a, a third order equation for omega. So it's natural to find three roots. So 
there are actually you know two modes which are hydrodynamic you know because they have this property that when k goes to zero also omega goes to to zero yeah so there's omega h which is plus minus k over the square root of three there is some imaginary part which goes squared but small for small k anyway if k goes to zero omega goes to zero yeah so an imaginary part is smaller than, than this uh, the, the linear part yeah, so so you see that um, this mode can live as long as you wish yeah because it means that you can make gradient smaller and smaller so you can make k really smaller and smaller and then omega can be as small as, as you like so this mode can really live as long as as you as you as you want to have it yeah so this is the hydrodynamic mode by definition but uh, this system uh, includes also non-hydrodynamic mode and you know this mode is characterized by this property that when k goes to zero so actually um, omega doesn't go to zero it has you know imaginary part so if you put it into the exponential like e to the minus i times omega it will be damped you know so this non-hydrodynamic mode is damped and what you see somehow what is very interesting is that you know the mode is really characterized by the relaxation time so the kinetic coefficient we have introduced or Israel Stewart introduced has really this interpretation of the relaxation time so there are you know, hydrodynamic modes and non-hydrodynamic modes you see that you need Israel Stewart theory to have non-hydrodynamic modes because you know tau pi appears here not here so when tau pi goes to to zero, you know, this blows up. It doesn't make sense. We can also study, you know, the sound waves and calculate the group velocity V. And now what is interesting is that for, you know, for most cases, you can have it smaller than one in natural units, but not always. So the new lesson is that, you know, Israel Stewart is good. It uh, solves many, many problems, but not everything, because actually there is a criterion on, on you know, on, on the relaxation time. This quantity inside cannot be uh, larger than some value which makes V equal to unity. Yeah? So if you just calculate, you see that temperature time, relaxation time should be larger than two eta divided by entropy density. So you see, you cannot go with uh, relaxation time to to zero because this quantity will be not fulfilled if at over s is finite and this the kind of example that navier stokes is uh, not not causal you know but also israel stewart may have problems if the relaxation time is uh, small uh, enough but really we take it large enough to to have this criterion fulfilled so okay so i think that now it may be good time to, to make uh, a break and ask you for some questions because uh, yes I'm talking almost uh, I don't know 40 minutes so uh, let's make some break maybe not and it's right okay so you um, you make perturbation yes so you look for some perturbation of all quantities as plane waves yes you write uh, for instance U X as some amplitude times e to minus omega times time plus i k x like plane wave you know and you put uh, such plane waves into the hydrodynamic equations and then you will get some relations between the frequency omega and the wave vector so it's like solving Schrodinger equation, you know, then when you put the plane wave and you get that omega is k squared over 2m, yeah, or something like this. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, uh, so it's just the perturbation, linear perturbation, and then you get uh, what can be called the uh, somehow dispersion relation, yeah, this dispersion relation that connects omega with with uh, k. So for each wave vector, we know the energy or frequency in units of h bar 
And now there are different different modes, so there is different dependence of omega on, on k. You know, so actually the first term. So for plane waves in Schrodinger equation, we would have that omega is k squared over two times m, more or less. Yeah. Uh, and then um, in this case, we have linear dependence of omega on k, and there is some correction. It goes like k squared, but it's for small k, it's already correction. Yeah. So omega may say it's real, and you have two modes that go to the right and to the left. And then we have uh, non hydrodynamic mode. Yeah? So we have another solution of this equation 26, where omega is a constant, which is imaginary, plus correction, which depends on k. So in this case, k, I mean, when k goes to zero in for the non hydrodynamic mode, omega doesn't go to zero. Yeah? So after a while, which is longer than relaxation time here, this mode will disappear. And then, and then what is left is hydrodynamic mode because it, because this mode will live very, very long. Suppose that K is, you make it smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah? So this mode will always live, uh, but uh, this guy, I think this non-hydrodynamic term will disappear after the time which is larger than than relaxation time because this is damped exponential. So, so hydrodynamic equations uh, in the form of Israel Stewart they contain both. They contain uh, they contain non-hydrodynamic modes and hydrodynamic modes, and so this solves also. Paradox, what I was telling you that Navier Stokes uh, theory is uh, bad as it is formulated, but on the other hand, a good approximation for the system that uh, approach equilibrium. Because if you combine all these results which are here, you see that when, for instance, relaxation time is very short, then the velocity of the wave P is much larger than the speed of light. So you see. For small relaxation time, the system is is not not causal. Yeah. Uh, so you need some relaxation time first to make it causal. This theory. On the other hand, if we make it causal, then we also introduce non-hydrodynamic modes here, which actually disappear. Right? Yeah? Because they are exponential time, so they will disappear. And what is left is non-hydrodynamic modes. Non-hydrodynamic modes actually can be described by the Navier-Stokes uh, theory. So, so non, so Israel Stewart theory um, describes the systems um, where at the beginning everything is dominated by non-hydrodynamic modes. They decay. What is left are non-hydrodynamic modes, and they are described more or less by by. Uh, uh, Navier-Stokes theory. So Navier-Stokes theory itself is bad, but is a good asymptotics for the system which uh, approach local equilibrium. So it's somehow complicated, but on the other hand, if you have, you know, this picture in mind that you excite the system, there are fast modes that decay exponentially, and then there are um, non-hydrodynamic modes which are live longer and non -hydro and hydrodynamic modes can be described by obvious talks and everything's okay in the sense that the talk is for late time description of system approaching equilibrium so eventually systems go always even if you Israel you are after a while the system is described by obvious talks but you, but usually if you start with uh, only Navier Stokes formalism for some arbitrary initial conditions, you will have problems. Yeah, I'm not sure whether after your question, but. Okay, so it's, so it's just the perturbation. It's like the perturbation that you perturb the system, you just look for, for waves in the system which is in global equilibrium, and then you find relation between frequency of the mode and wave vector. So you find the dispersion relation. 
And they can be different sorts of polarization of those waves. They correspond to the sound channel, shear channel, and tensor channel. Okay, any further questions? No. Okay, if not, then. Okay, so we finished kind of uh, uh, large topic, I mean, uh, Israel Stewart approach to non relativistic hydrodynamics. It's really, I think, fundamentally in the sense that it offers the formalism, which is for most of the cases causal, uh, stable, and uh, you can use it in practice. Um, but uh, everything is based on, you know, arguments which refer to the entropic current. Um, but, you know, in, you can do, do something more, you know, some different approaches. And now I want to go through some different approaches. One approach which is very, I would say, elegant. Uh, it goes with the acronym BRSS or BRSS or BRS cubed. Uh, it was formulated in 2008 by Bayer, Romachka, Stefano. So, you know, um, this is a very elegant approach because it's based completely on the on the symmetry of the system. Uh, one neglects the uh, barium current. Uh, uh, one also assumes that the system is conformal, so we don't have bulk uh, pressure. So the bulk pressure is zero. And uh, what... Uh, they do, they make some expansion of the shear stress tensor. So the shear stress tensor is only, I would say, uh, the only important quantity uh, if you assume all, all symmetries. Should I show you this slide with complicated equations? But don't try it. You know, just I copy it. I usually don't do it, but you know, uh, you know, the guys are real theoreticians, so they put everything into the curved space time. So there are terms which contain, you know, curvature tensors and the Riemann tensor is here. We can neglect these terms containing R, you know? And we can also neglect the terms with the vorticity, which is also included here. Uh, but uh, so then, uh, you know, what, what they do, I think what they do is actually described by, by these two equations. So the first line, you know, from the, Actually, this is equation 3.11 from the paper. What they do, they simply expand the shear stress. They have different notations. So this is capital pi mu nu. In my notation, it was usually small pi mu nu. They have different metrics. So they have minus eta, sigma mu nu, and they don't have factor of two here. But this everything is kind of, you know, question of conventions. But no, I want to tell you what is really the most important thing here. So, you know, the right the terms which are uh, linear ingredients like sigma mu, which is acceptable here, but they also write other terms which are higher ingredients. And for instance, they have the term which contains the time derivative of the sigma mu nu, because this actually the second order term, the derivatives of the flow, uh, you know, <clears throat> so u mu or u alpha d alpha of sigma mu nu. And there will be also the term which we kind of uh, uh, may expect. So sigma mu nu times the divergence of u. So this is the expansion scale. <coughs> but they have also the term which goes like, you know, product two sigma. You can contract two sigma with one index. So you can still have a tensor which is rank two. <coughs> Excuse me, rank two, uh, uh, which is. Uh, you know, symmetric orthogonal traceless, this is mu and mu. And now what happens, you know, uh, so this is the gradient expansion, mu gradient expansion. Excuse me, I have to drink something. Uh, but <clears throat> what they do is kind of heuristic step. You know, they use the first order expression in the equation which is of second order. You know, so, you know, in the first order, pi and sigma are related through this equation, you know, there are no other terms. <clears throat> so in the for the second order, they say that you can use up to, you know, accuracy in the second order, the first order relation. So the derivative of sigma mu nu 
can be replaced with the derivative of, of pi. And now what happens is exactly what, what Israel and Stuart got, you know, because uh, then when uh, Israel and Stuart started entropy production, then eventually they found that uh, pi is a dynamic uh, quantity which should be independently treated as a hydrodynamic variable. So similar thing happens here because you know, first line is just gradient expansion of pi mu nu. You write all possible terms which are allowed by the symmetry. But then you use first order hydro and you replace the derivative of sigma by the der derivative of pi. And in this way, you obtain the second line, the derivative of pi, and this is the equation of the Israel Stewart type. Then you have time derivative of pi um, and simply get, uh, you get, um, that equation, which actually is very similar to to Israel Stewart story. Interesting point is, which was discussed by many somehow authors, is that there is also also a new term which which comes from the product of two sigmas. You know, one of the sigma can be again replaced by pi, and then you will have you no know, coupling of pi to sigma and uh, this is okay. You can do actually this in different ways because you can write this term as a product two pi or pi and sigma, or you can keep two sigmas. You know, up to second order is is the same. Uh, so, but there is a new term, and what is very interesting somehow is that this term doesn't appear in the Israel Stewart uh, theory. So there was a long discussion about uh, this new term which was found by th those people and somehow the understanding now is that this term cannot be somehow obtained from entropy arguments so this is the term which doesn't contribute to the entropy production but it may appear in the dynamic equation for pi mu nu so uh, so there is some other term which can be included here. On the other hand, you know, this theory of uh, of Bayer and company is uh, limited to very symmetric uh, case. Uh, we assume many uh, symmetries, in particular conformal symmetry, which is quite strong. So, you know, we have one more term, but we don't have other terms, which usually uh, are um, somehow they appear at approaches. Yeah. So, so to summarize, you know, we have Israel Stewart approach, which is based on the entropy ar arguments. Then uh, there is a very clean uh, uh, approach of buyer and uh, uh, collaborators, which is based on some very uh, simple uh, symmetry arguments, mainly conformal symmetry. And then what is crucial here is gradient expansion, which is done for shear stress tensor. And then there's kind of heuristic step to use first order um, hydro to make from the gradient expansion real, real dynamic equation for pi. So this is also, this is the way to, uh, to, to, uh, to introduce dynamic equation for the shear stress tensor. I think this approach is also kind of attractive because uh, also Israel Stewart, uh, arguments that refer to entropy production are attractive because there is no reference to microscopic uh, degrees of freedom. Yeah? So in this case, we use uh, some coefficients and um, like this case, lambda, kappa, eta, you introduce some coefficients, but then you have to measure it. You know, there is no uh, hint about any value of, of these kinetic coefficients. You have to measure them. Yeah? So this theory is good for description of systems that approach local equilibrium. So uh, if you, for instance, describe heavy ion, heavy ion collisions, and uh, there are some arguments that heavy ion collisions really produce at the end some systems which are close to local equilibrium, then you can determine kinetic coefficient. No? So uh, it's interesting that this methodology is in fact used, yeah? because very often we use uh, you know, 
kinetic coefficients as kind of parameters, and we try to determine them from the experiment. And actually, the shear viscosity tends to be close to 1 over 4 pi from the experiment, although it's also close to the value that is given by the ads cft correspondence. So, so Burr's approach and J.I. Stewart are sort of um, independent uh, of microscopic, uh, um, you know, structure matters. So it's like thermodynamic versus statistical physics, you know. So now we go to uh, to kind of microscopic description. If you have some microscopic uh, theory, like the kinetic theory, we can derive um, the dynamic equations. So it's the kind of standard procedure, but standard, maybe it's um, a simplification to say it's really uh, simple. It was done, of course, in the past, you know, when Boltzmann equation was formulated in the 19th century, and there were later in the 20th century many attempts to derive hydrodynamics, especially in particular relativistic hydrodynamics from the kinetic theory. And you can imagine that with time, the story was like this, that uh, people who were later usually realized that there were some terms missing earlier approaches. So um, I would say that uh, the most, uh, you know, the extended uh, and rigorous approach to derive hydrodynamics from the Boltzmann kinetic equation was done uh, in Frankfurt in the group of uh, Rischke and collaborators. There was actually a group of four people working and they wrote a series of papers about uh, how to derive uh, hydrodynamics from from, uh, from the kinetic theory. So these are the Nicole Niemi Monarista. So we have another acronym, DNMR, uh, which appears in the literature. Uh, and they what they do is they actually make some expansion of the Knudsen number. Knudsen number is actually a number which is the ratio of Kind of microscopic length, like the mean free path to the to the size of the system. So usually you can calculate, for instance, the gradient of the temperature divided by the temperature and uh, divided by the length of the system. So like the logarithmic derivative of the temperature scaled by the size of the system. So this would be dimensionless quantity, which is which describes how strong are the gradients in the system. So this is the, the expansion of the Knudsen number. But on the other hand, somehow to make expansion in, in, in pi and uh, capital pi and small pi, and this quantity can be related to the Reynolds number. So actually, if the inverse of Reynolds number is small, then pi is small. So what they do, they make kind of rigorous expansion in the Knudsen number and also in the inverse Reynolds number. They start with the Boltzmann kinetic uh, equation, full, uh, you know, form with the collision term, which is quite complicated. I guess that some of you saw the collision term, which is kind of complicated beast, uh, combines with distribution functions which are integrated. In fact, Boltzmann kinetic equation is differential, integral in differential equation, it's quite complicated. So what they do, uh, they, assume some form of the distribution function which appears in the Boltzmann kinetic equation. They make also some correction, the corrections to the to the to this function because they write it the equilibrium part plus some you know correction. The corrections introduce some kinetic coefficients, like in the arguments of Israel Stewart, we have also some additional functions. And they they construct uh, you know they construct the um, the full hydrodynamic theory which is based the kinetic theory. What is the advantage? The advantage is that you have all possible terms which can appear. Uh, so actually, I present only uh, a version which is opt for the simplified collision term. But you have many, many terms. And actually, what is also an advantage of the approach is that the values of all kinetic coefficients are well known, because they can be calculated through the kinetic theory. So this is good if you believe that uh, um, if you believe that uh, 
uh, you know, this microscopic theory to be the true theory of nature. And this is good for classical or for atoms, molecules. For cold gluon plasma, it might be a bad uh, approach. But nevertheless, uh, it gives also some hint about the values of different kinetic conditions. So it's, uh, it has some advantages. But for strongly interacting cold gluon plasma, where Okay, the system consists of quads and gluons, but it's difficult to imagine that there are some quasi particles uh, with quad and gluon quantum numbers. Then, probably, a proto of Israel and Stewart and uh, Burr's approach is better. But, but on the other hand, uh, you know, there are hints, and not only hints, you know, for a given, you know, microscopic theory which we believe is well described by the Postman kinetic equation, then we can get all possible terms in hydrodynamic equations and we can get the value of the kinetic coefficients. So the work of Nicole and Niemi Molnar Rischke showed that there are some new terms which people didn't think before that, for instance, give the coupling between the bulk sector and the shear sector. So there are, since terms in the volume of pi, capital pi, bulk pressure, that contain the product of uh, of uh, pi, mu nu, and sigma mu nu. So actually, there is kind of some influence of the shear flow effects on the bulk, and uh, also for the in the equation for the shear tensor, there are terms that you know couple uh, to to the bulk. Yeah, there is bulk pressure multiplied by the shear flow. So, so, so these two questions start uh, to be somehow connected to this uh, exchange. Somehow. People usually say that substances are not important because somehow bulk effects have nothing to do with the shear effects, so this term should be zero. But actually, if you use kinetic theory, you can calculate the coefficient, kinetic coefficient lambda, big pi, small pi, they are not zero. And I will argue tomorrow that they are really important if we want to have hydro, which describes, uh, you know, the system, which is microscopically well described by the Boltzmann equation. So if you want to really make hydro, which uh, describes effectively the system um, described microscopically by Boltzmann kinetic equation, it's better to include all these kinetic coefficients and we know the forms of the kinetic coefficients. So, so this is a kind of... Um, I would say the uh, the first line of advances in in the study which aim at deriving hydrodynamics, relativistic hydrodynamics from the Boltzmann kinetic equation. Yeah. The advantage is that we know the forms of the kinetic kinetic all kinetic coefficients. We know the structure of all the terms. Everything is under control. Uh, but microscopic picture is somehow dominant here. So if we don't believe in the microscopic picture that we have you know, isolated particles that scatter in the system, it's quite dilute, then uh, better don't use it, but keep, you know, kinetic coefficients as some unknown functions. But you know, on the other hand, such calculations, which is very specific, um, you know, shows that there might be some other things which usually you cannot think. It's not easy to figure out that can appear. You know, if you do the very specific, you see that for instance, such things will appear. Okay, so uh, now another story. Uh, so another story, another approach. You know, the approach of of those guys, PNMR, is based on on studies of the moments of the kinetic equation. So somehow, instead of using the kinetic equation, you study the moments of the kinetic equation, and then you, you derive hydro. So this is called also like the grad moment, uh, who, who did this approach in the past. But there was there's also a series of papers by <clears throat> a good friend of mine, Amarish Daiswal, who is now a professor in Bhubaneswar in India, in NICER. So already before his PhD, he started, uh, you know, work on derivation of relativistic uh, dissipative hydrodynamics within the relaxation time approximation. This is again kinetic theory, but with a simple form of the uh, of the collision term. 
Usually the collision term is quite complicated, it's a kind of integral of the distribution functions and uh, is very difficult to be with. But uh, what is very popular, it was popularized by Gordon Bay in the 1980s, you know, there is a very intuitive form of the collision term, which is given here on the right hand side. So you simply say that the collision term has the form of the difference of the actual distribution function f, phase space distribution function, and the equilibrium function. So, you know, the function changes whenever it's different from the equilibrium. So, in other words, the collision term written in this way tells you that the distribution function in the phase space goes to the equilibrium function with the time which is given by the, again, relaxation time, tau r. Uh, if we, I should say immediately that if you derive hydro using this equation, then this relaxation time, which appears in the kinetic equation, we have something to do with the relaxation time the Israel Stewart equations. But, uh, you know, if you start the kinetic theory with this term, the tau r is just, um, you know, a parameter here. For instance, the conformal theory would like to have it to be in, uh, inversely proportional to the temperature because temperature would be the only scale. Yeah? But you can take it also as a constant just to facilitate the calculation. If you want to make it momentum dependent, to make it more realistic, there are problems with the application of this uh, approach. So usually tau r, the relaxation time, is, is a function of temperature. And then F0 is the equilibrium function, which has this form of the uh, Bose-Einstein or Fermi-Dirac distribution. Beta is the inverse temperature, alpha is the chemical potential divided by the temperature, so I called it xi in, 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 in my slides before. R is either plus one or minus one, so plus one for fermions, fermions minus one for bosons. When R goes to zero, we re reproduce classical Boltzmann statistics. So this form is the quite attractive because many things can be done, yeah? So many people like it. Actually, it became very popular tool to analyze uh, uh, different, you know, processes. How you solve it? You simply solve it in such a way that you write F as a series. Or you write F as a, you know, equilibrium part plus some correction, plus some, you know, higher order correction. What you do, you put the series into the kinetic equation, and then you say that relaxation time is small, so you can solve it order by order. So for instance, the correction, the first order correction is just uh, obtained as equilibrium function plus operator from the left-hand side acting on equilibrium function. Equilibrium function, we have dependence on temperature, chemical potential. So you immediately see that, that the distribution function contains a you know, equilibrium part, which gives you perfect fluid hydrodynamics when you integrate it and make calculate. You know. But there will be also some, you know, gradient terms. So this will give immediately the steward, not steward, for an obvious talk. But if you go to the second order in gradient, will get this LST word, you know, form of the equation. Yeah, so, so this is quite attractive, and this was uh, worked out uh, by Amaresh. Um, you know, the idea is that, uh, you know, you have this correction, and then you can calculate simply the bulk pressure, you can calculate the corrections to the current, the shear stress tensor, simply by the integral of the, the correct corrections to the distribution. So everything is quite because it requires some, you know, careful uh, analysis and keeping all those terms. One also uses height in the first order to complete it in the second order. So there are some heuristic steps. So I would say to that to really have uh, reasonable, I mean, causal stable hydrodynamics, one has to always do some heuristic steps um, that. Uh, uh, you know, make it uh, that introduce. I should say they introduce in non, non hydrodynamic modes into the system and make this theory uh, stable and and causal. Okay, another 
uh, another development is anisotropic hydro. So this was actually quite uh, dependent uh, development. And it started along two kind of lines. W one line was initiated by Radek and myself. And we again tried to do it without any re reference to microscopic degrees of freedom. So uh, this approach was used on the energy momentum conservation. And we somehow assumed that there is an entropy source because the system is uh, not uh, isotropic. So the idea was to have some kind of effective hydro which describes early stages of heavy ion collisions where for sure we know that the system is non-isotropic. Uh, non and this funny, funny thing to mention is that there was parallel work by Mike Strickland and uh, Maurizio Martinez. They published the paper, you know, two days after us. Okay, not published, actually they published earlier than our paper, but they put two days later they paper to the archive. So the lesson for everyone is that don't take your papers too long because if you are late then, <clears throat> and especially when Americans are earlier, then you cannot survive with your <laughs> ideas. What was the main reason? You know, so I mentioned that somehow at the very initial stages of heavy ion collisions, we have a huge acceleration. The Longitudinal direction, we have also longitudinal gradients, which are very large, and the system is not non isotropic in the momentum space. Uh, and already uh, Mike Strickland and Romachka and other people were discussing uh, anisotropic orgluon plasma. Also, my friend Stan Brubczynski was kind of one of the leaders of these um, ideas that the system is not anisotropic. So because you know ideas with anisotropic pressure were quite successful to describe you know many things, then we thought that this should be somehow combined with hydrodynamics for early stages. The idea is that you know if you have anisotropic distribution functions, so you can somehow introduce it with the minimal minimum effort, so you can start with the isotropic isotropic distribution and make somehow temperature in the longitudinal direction and the transverse direction different. You know? So you may start with a kind of Boltzmann distribution and uh, change the scale for transverse momenta and longitudinal momenta. Uh, so actually, this is what uh, what we were using uh, with Radek Rivlewski. Uh, Mike was using different parameterizations to introduce famous anisotropy parameter psi, the momentum scale lambda. But of course, they, they, there is a relation between the two. And then somehow you can make it everything really covariant. So you can introduce the generalization of the team you knew, which has the perfect fluid form with the transverse pressure preferred. And there will be another, another uh, part which takes care of isotropy of pressure. So it looks like minimum extension of perfect fluid to anisotropic systems. You have additional, um, you know, thermodynamic sort of variable, which is uh, anisotropy parameter, which I think Mike called psi, we called x, which was one plus psi, but it doesn't matter. You know, we have some additional anisotropy parameter and we need one equation, which is additional. And actually we said that, you know, entropy is produced quadratically. Um, so one has to take you know, the difference of the temperatures which are here and square it. Mike was using actually the relaxation time approximation and he was using the moments of the relaxation time the kinetic equation to the height. Actually, the two approaches are, are equivalent, but um, uh, you know, and then there was a series of, of developments because uh, this was done in such a way that we started first the simple system that expand in one direction, which are both invariant, but then we uh, included expansion, which was first uh, only cylindrical and uh, later arbitrary. So eventually, um, now there is something like 3 plus 1 anisotropic hydrodynamics, which was so used to describe the data, it works um, pretty well. Uh, you can also, you know, develop anisotropic hydrodynamics in different ways. You can always say the distribution function has this Romachka-Strigland 
form, which is anisotropic, uh, only sort of in one direction. And then you can find uh, corrections like the nickel and collaborators, or you can put all anisotropy into the leading uh, distributions. Actually, the idea behind the final idea behind this anisotropic hydro, which was realized by Leonardo Tinti, was that you have to introduce anisotropic anisotropic tensor to the distribution function, and uh, uh, you know introduce new parameters here. So this is almost the end. I only want to emphasize. What was the advantage of, of this approach? I think the main advantage was that Israel Stewart, you know, sometimes is not really uh, perfect. And if you make, you know, the corrections of this type, sometimes this correction might be larger than the initial term, especially if the grades are large. So actually for people who run the code and try to describe the data, they have always problems with Kind of negative pressure we appear at the edges of the system because at the edges the gradient is large and the correction become not controlled and then you get the negative pressure so one popular explanation of this effect was that people were saying okay we don't refer to any microscopic theory you know so our pressure may be negative because there are you know phenomena in nature that lead to negative pressure like the electromagnetic fields but uh, on the other hand, if you are at the end of the evolution, uh, you describe you know, the system like the hadronic gas, you know, kinetic theory should be correct and kinetic theory gives always positive pressure. So I think this idea to have everything in the exponential function and modify the argument here uh, was, uh, was quite good because we could prove that this is equivalent with Israel Stewart, but we also have had always, you know, pressures positive, you know, so this kind of treatment, regularized behavior, hydrodynamic behavior, <clears throat> the edges of the system where the gradients are large. If you make expansion of, of let's say, exponent, then you get many, many terms. So, so anisotropic hydro is a kind of, uh, kind of uh, resumation of the gradient expansion up to infinity, but it takes very specific class of of terms. So, okay, so, so this is more or less everything what I wanted to tell you uh, today, just to complete Israel Stewart. This is the most important thing. That those who are interested, I think, are encouraged to, to do this calculation. I can also send you the, those slides. The, I think this is a very nice, I think, beautiful piece of uh, general physics, relativistic physics. So I think it's very nice to learn about this. Uh, then uh, we have to remember that there are also derivation of hydro that start from the kinetic theory. And there are sort of two methods. One method is the method of moments, DNMR. The other method is based on the gradient expansion on the relaxation time approximation made by Jaiswal companies. But in the meantime, you know, there are also proposals for completely new hydrodynamic uh, uh, approaches. And anisotropic hydro is one example of this, and um, is related also with the kinetic theory formulation. I think for simple geometries, you can make it kind of kinetic theory independent, but you, if you want to develop it for general geometries, then you, at the moment we know how to do it only with the reference to kinetic theory. In the relaxation time approximation, I must admit also. Okay, so thank you. I think this is everything for, for today, what I wanted to tell you.